whoever it is that is going to take the snaps at QB1 for Jackson State next season will have a Maserati to drive. And when they hand him the keys to that Maserati, all he got to do is not crash it. Whoever is going to be the QB1 is going to have the best wide receiver room in the SWAC and one of the best wide receiver rooms in the nation in the FCS. Jackson State fans, I need y'all to know, and y'all clearly, maybe y'all do know, your receiver room is still one of the most desirable receiver rooms in the FCS, regardless of who you lost, regardless of losing Dallas, regardless of losing Shane to the transfer portal, who you still could get back, regardless of losing Travis and Kevin Coleman, you still have a very desirable wide receiver room. So whoever the offensive coordinator is, whoever the QB1 is, all you got to do is not crash it. You're going to get the keys, just don't crash it. What we're going to do is talk about the potential lineup Guys who we know are going to get a lot of playing time at the receiver position next season and how they stack up versus the SWAC. So let's get into it. But before we do, disclaimer, there are, there are a lot more receivers on this roster who are not going to be listed in this video. Guys like Kobe Paul or Christian Allen, guys who are really good, but because of the guys that are already here in this receiver room, we just might not see them next year. So they're there on this roster. I didn't forget about them. This is just the lineup that we are expecting to see. Um, so let's get into it. You start with Trevante Rucker, a guy who didn't get a lot of playing time for Jackson State, simply because you had guys like Dallas, you had guys like Shane, or Cam, you know, you had all of these guys who were ahead of him in class. And, you know, just at the moment, they just provided the better option. They were the better fit to be out on that field. And they gave the team the best chance to win. But Javante Rucker is still a four-star wide receiver from Florida who's very dynamic, who had very meaningful snaps in his freshman year. Who I mean, he made plays. This is a guy who sat and waited his turn, never complained, not once. He waited his turn. And now next year, you're going to see him get back to making plays like he did in his freshman season. And I can't wait to see him on the field next year. I'm expecting a big bounce back year from Trevante Rucker. After Trevante Rucker, we got a guy who was very... His debut was highly anticipated for Jackson State. We were very excited to see him sign with Jackson State. Quay Davis, Quadarius Davis. Now, Quay Davis <clears throat> did suffer an injury uh, later on this season. So he went to the hospital. I think he posted on his Instagram story. I don't know if he had surgery or not, but if he did, basically he'll be good to go. But Quadarius Davis was a four-star wide receiver, okay, out of high school, coming out of Texas, Skyline, Texas. And we had high hopes for him because, man, we looked at him as an Anquan Bowden, Des Bryant type of receiver. He's very athletic, very athletic, right? Can make such great catches, so acrobatic. His his vertical is something to be desired. I mean, my goodness, Quay Davis was just a monster, right? And then in his first season starting this year, he didn't really show much for the same reason that Trevante Rucker didn't show much. It was just too many guys ahead of him. It was the most packed receivers receiver room in the country. I think this new offensive coordinator will look at Quay and use him in the way that he needs to be used as a traditional wide receiver. And I can't wait to see him on the field for Jackson State next season. After Quay Davis, you have another four star in Rico Powers. 23 receptions last year, 213 yards with his past season, and 9.3 yards per catch. That's what Rico Powers contributed to the team. Now, even though he got meaningful snaps, even he was still behind uh, Dallas Daniels and Cam and Shane Hooks. He was still behind them, but he got more meaningful snaps because he was a little bit more experienced being coming from the SEC playing with the Gamecocks. He's still a young guy, still got a couple years of eligibility left. So Rico Powers is a tremendous route runner who I think with this offense that they're getting ready to run with the personnel that they're bringing in, I think Rico Powers is going to break out. He's going to break out and he might be, he might be the leading receiver. Maybe. I'm going to just, I'm going to just go ahead and put that on him because I think he can do it. So look out for Rico Powers next season as well. After Rico Powers, we got Willie Gaines. Willie Gaines wasn't a four-star prospect, but Willie Gaines was the firecracker for Jackson State early on last season. From, from early last season to mid-last season, Willie Gaines 
created the spark where it needed to be made. Willie Gaines was out there balling, man. I mean, you could not stop him at one point. He was the focal point of the offense. They just had to get him included. Plus, he provided spark on kick return as well. With Rico, with I'm sorry, with Willie Gaines, he had 27 receptions on the season, but in those 27 receptions, he had over 400 yards, 446 to be exact. You add that on to the five touchdowns that he brought in the air, averaging 16.5 yards a catch. Let me say that again, because that is crazy. He averaged 16.5 yards a catch on the season. I expect him to have the same impact next season, no matter who's throwing him the ball. Now, after Willie Gaines... You got Seven McGee, another four-star receiver. Seven McGee, my guy, my favorite player in college football, um, being an Oregon fan. So, you know, I was very happy when he chose you guys. Seven McGee is very talented. He's a very talented individual. He's an athlete, so he'll be a running back and receiver. He's not, he's not really used to playing receiver because he's been playing running back in high school the majority of his time, but he can give you something. At receiver, he's. I, I don't think he's going to be stopped at this level, wherever he lines up at. So listen, he's going to bring that spark, right? He's going to come in. And he's going to be a team player, and he's going to be used wherever you need to use him. This is your biggest offseason addition, so he's going to help you in whatever way he can. After seven, McGee, you got one of the younger guys who we could see on the field potentially next season, Joannis Portillion. How many of you remember that guy? Now Joannis was just a true freshman last year. But, man, he is 6'3", 200 pounds. If you don't get Shane Hooks back, he could be that next Shane Hooks. Seriously, he could be that next Shane Hooks. I mean, this kid, man, listen, the wingspan on him, incredible. The height, good. He has really good size out of high school to be a college wide receiver. Like, he could have came in and been just fine if he was to start. But, that just wasn't the case. You know, it, it really was a redshirt year for him. So we, I can't wait to see how he turns up and if he's going to get on the field because Joannis Battalion is a name that I have not forgot about and I can't wait to see him. By the way, guys, we got one more four-star. We got one more four-star that I haven't even brought up yet. Who We ain't even seen much of last season. And y'all know who I'm talking about. That's Malachi Wideman. Oh, yeah. Yeah, see, see, we all wanted Malachi Wadman to play so bad this season. I do not agree with how they handled him under the prime regime. I just don't. I think, yes, his grade slipped because of basketball, but he did everything he needed to do to get himself back on the field, and it didn't happen. He deserved to be played way more than what he did. Way more. I'll never agree. I'll never agree with how they handled Malachi Wadman. But the great news is that he's staying and he's going to be on the field now. Best believe that. He's going to be on the field now. Malachi Wyman is going to come back and he's going to show y'all why he turned up the way that he did in the first season that he stepped on the field for the Tigers. So I can't wait to see him. He's been out last year, had minor playing time, but we're going to see him. And I can't wait to see him. Then, of course, you got guys, like I said, David Studstill, Kobe Paul, those two individuals are very talented, especially Stud Still. Stud Still still could probably be sneaky enough to work his way on the field because the boy, the boy and his spectacular catching ability, insane. Insane. We haven't even gotten to the freshmen that you guys are bringing in, like Isaiah Spencer. We have we haven't even we haven't even talked about him and how great he is as a big body receiver. Y'all, y'all are gonna be just fine. Y'all are going to be just fine. And newsflash, this might not be it at receiver. There's two more guys potentially waiting. One from Tennessee. Uh, I think the other one is from West Virginia. Yeah, West Virginia. So it might not even be over yet with this receiver room. It's deadly. It's deadly. So really, all you have to do is focus on the offensive line, even though you didn't lose much. You lost Willis, Patrick, and Tyler Brown. But, you know, that's two spaces that you need to uh, – fulfill so you need to worry about that and you, you're still trying to find who could be your signal caller so all in all y'all are still damn good i mean y'all are really good you retain Sivion wilkinson as well you got jd martin back seven will be playing some running back y'all y'all are fine jackson state get ready it's gonna be a season it's gonna be a season to remember uh just so y'all know though y'all play a certain school in the MEAC swat challenge in week one <laughs> in Atlanta.
I'm going to be there. I'm going to be there. But y'all know whose side I'm going to be on. I love y'all. But y'all know whose side I'm going to be on. So let's, you know, let's just get that out the way now. I love y'all forever, though. Y'all know that, but it's Bulldog till I die. Listen, man, this is the Blit Titty Podcast. I'm your host, Kobe York. Thank you so much for watching. If you would like to donate to the channel, you can do so through Cash App. Or you could also help the channel by subscribing. I would very much appreciate it as we are on the road to 11,000. With that being said, I'm out. Peace.